Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Manny. And today we're going to be showing you common functions and features of the MZ-12. Now, one of our desires is to give you guys the best results and experience possible with companies that we're proud of. Today we have the honor of working with Manny from Gropner USA. We're going to be covering a lot of features and functions, so we have a menu in front of you. Feel free to click on those annotations or check the links down below to go directly to the portion that pertains to you. Along with that link, you're also going to see a link to the manual for this radio. We're going to cover a lot of common features, but not all of them. Now Manny, all of your radios come pre-bound with the receiver that they're included with, correct? That's correct, yes. All the receivers have been uh, factory bound and actually uh, check with the radio so you technically you don't have to do anything you just take your receiver and start working it and putting it in a model great now in the case that you do need to bind it how would we do that um, binding is actually very very simple you don't need to have any cables or any any kind of connectors to do that and I'll show you how to do it so I got my little lefty sportster here and we have a, a GR 12 L yep we're going to also want to make sure that we remove our prop, right? No matter what you do, anytime you're working with your electronics, always make sure you remove the prop. Yes, please. That's that's a very important safety uh, aspect of uh, our hobby. So when you, when you start the radio and there is no model bound to it, it's actually the first thing that it will show you if you want to bind the radio. Um, you can go default saying yes, and it will bring you directly to the main menu. From there, you can go to the uh, RF set menu and do the uh, the binding. So let's talk about this. On your left hand here, you have cursors, and on your right hand, you have other functions like yes. enter, escape. Correct, these, these are navigation keys. Now, on the left hand side, that's the navigation that moves you along the menu here. So uh, uh, right, left, up, down. Uh, on the right hand side are the primary keys that is the enter key, that's when you confirm something. It's the telemetry key, we'll talk about that later. The view key, which is the key that actually shows you what the servos are doing. Monitor, okay. yeah, I love Yes, it. it's a monitor. And an escape key that lets you back out from any kind of uh, a menu or a setting that you have. So these are the four keys which you use to actually call up an action, and the left-hand keys are for navigating through the menus. So binding is very straightforward. You go to the RF set menu, you press enter, and one of the things that we would like you to look at is the stick mode. Uh, stick mode normally has to be two. Yes, yeah, so in the US we use two, in Europe it's predominantly one, correct? Exactly, and basically what will happen if you leave it on one, your throttle will be on the wrong channel. You don't want that, and that's another reason to also take off your props. Correct. So to change it, in case your radio comes with number with a stick mode number one, you just press the enter key, and you use the arrow keys on the left hand side to uh, change the number. Uh, we go back to uh, default number two, and um, basically we now have the right mode for uh, uh, here the operations in the U.S. Beautiful. So we're at stick mode number two, which is the first thing. Now we're going to go down to bind, correct? That's correct. Uh, going to the bind menu, you press uh, the uh, the down key until you come to the RX bind, okay. and this is where everything starts. So what you do now is powering your model. Once again, did I mention props off? <laughs> All you school kids out there, if you're watching this, props off. Yeah. You'll see that the receiver. Uh, there is a right LED light uh, actually uh, turn on and what we want to do is to get it, the receiver in bind mode and we do that by pressing the set uh, uh, button. Do you want me to do that for you? Uh, yeah. Okay, super. And really different receivers have different colors that change. You're looking for that's, a change of state, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, so we're going to hold this down. There you go. And now we press bind. That is so much easier than a jumper. Uh, that's correct. So the receiver and the radio are now bound. Now, um, all our receivers usually have a green light to show you that uh, the receiver is bound. On the GR12L... A little bit of exception, that's why it, we use it. There yep. is, it's actually off, there's nothing. Yep. So if okay. it's red, that means it's in a state that you don't want, but if it's turned off, that means you have an actual link. That is correct. One thing that I have to mention is that the Gopner receivers are very, very sensitive. And so when you try to bind too close to the radio, it may give you problems, okay? Because basically the radio saturates the receiver with a signal and then you don't get what we call a clean bind, okay? Yes. Or a good bind. So always make sure you have two, three feet distance between you, uh, the receiver, and, and, and the radio, and then you'll be just, just fine. Yeah. Your communication link is super important. If you have any doubts whatsoever, make sure you go back and redo it and that you have a nice solid link. If you move your control surfaces and it's not nice and smooth, right. go ahead and go back and rebind it. I exactly. One other thing you will notice is that uh, on the RX bind, there is a number. 
and that number actually tells you how many channels the receiver has. So in this case here, this is a six channel receiver. If you would have taken a eight channel receiver, you will see R08. If you would have taken a 12 channel receiver, you will see that number. So uh, you can bind all those receivers to the uh, uh, MZ12. So you're not limited only to a six channel yeah. receiver. Uh, you can actually uh, use a, uh, even a eight channel or a 12 channel receiver. And while we're talking about receivers, it brings up a really good point. The fact that it recognized that means that there's a telemetry link. And why don't you tell us really quick about telemetry and also the overview on how Grappner works with its electronics and telemetry. Sure. Well, we, 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 we see ourselves really, uh, really leading the market with telemetry. Uh, uh, our hot systems are not just hot. <laughs> it actually stands for hopping telemetry transmission. So it's a bi-directional transmission. There is a communication going on between the receiver and the radio in real time. So actually the, rad the radio can read what's happening inside the receiver as well. This receiver is already broadcasting telemetry about your signal quality, so that's signal strength. So if you're flying and you fly out of range, you will get a notification. On the MZ12, it can be voice if you have an earpiece, mm -hmm. or you get these little peeps that notify you something is, is happening. It monitors your battery voltage. So if you go to the, uh, um, to the main menu, and the voltage on the model is now 5.5, uh, 5.4 volts. So that basically means that this receiver has 5.4 volts going through it? Correct. Perfect. Yes. Okay, Perfect. And, and so that if you, normally in an electrical model, you'll power that with a VEC, but uh, when you power that with a regular battery, um, battery voltage can drop and it will notify you. So you can always uh, get uh, information from your model in case there is an imminent failure and, and, and do something about yeah. it. Beautiful. So Manny, this MZ12 holds multiple models. How many does it hold? Uh, 20 models, and you can select between airplane model or helicopter model. Anytime you need to go to make any kind of changes, the hotkey for going there is the ENT, the enter key here. So basically you press that and you automatically will get into the menu functions of the MZ12. Now, the way it's built up is a kind of in a logical way. Usually when we start with a new model, um, that's actually going to be the first selection on the menu. You press enter and it will actually default directly to select model. Um, we did already bound one model, so we yeah. already have one model here that we uh, already configured, but okay. let's do one completely from scratch. So new model, uh, you'll see here that uh, the, uh, there are three models here because we only use one. You go with the arrow key one down and um, it will automatically ask you what you want to do, what kind of model you want. So it's an airplane or a helicopter, we'll select airplane. And it will automatically ask you already to bind the model. So let's go do that. And you say, okay. Yep. And it already sits automatically at the right yep. field to do the it, binding. Same process we talked about before. Go same ahead and process. switch stick mode to two. Now, always check that. It may already be set to two, depending on what ROM version you have. Yes. We'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll show make changes in the future to just <laughs> default it to. There you go. Okay. All right, so I'm holding down the button. I have a change of state. And let's do that. And it's bound. We're bound. Life okay. is good. Good. We go back to the uh, um, select model. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to do before we move forward is, is give the model a name. Yep. Okay. So let's name the model. Don't neglect this step because you're going to think you're going to remember it. I promise you will not. <laughs> okay. So, um, Give me a good short name. How about F22? F22. Once again, the common logic is the left is your scrolling pad, the enter is your execute. So you're going to go ahead and select to what you want, move it over, hit enter, and that has your number. Okay, we got F22 here. And that's our model. So if you go now to the uh, select model, we will see F22 here as a model yeah. that is available. I also like the fact that it gives you the name of the receiver too. You understand yes. you're working off of a six channel receiver. Correct, yes, so that's that's gonna be GR12L receiver. Beautiful, so our model is selected. Now we can hop from any model that we want or we can create a new one. The next step after you uh, selected your model and you named it is going to the model type to define basically how the radio should be treating your uh, uh, model. Um, Press the enter key and you go to the first menu and that is model type. Now there are three areas here where you have to look at. First of all, default, it comes as there is no throttle control for, uh, for the airplane. Okay, so let's say you set up a sailplane. So it says here motor, motor at C1, which is channel one. The motor is always on channel one and you have to tell it that you wanna have a motor sure. uh, on model here. So we press enter and we have multiple options here. 
okay? Um, here it's reversed, basically you, what, your idle is on a reverse, or you wanna have your idle. You see? And we have props up. <laughs> right. Um, so you can actually set the throttle either uh, from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. Uh, I don't know, that there are still people flying in that way here, but at least it accommodates yeah. two models here. But you saw what happened here, we now well, changed it. And on some gliders, when you have spoilers, the throttle's all the way up, or DLGs, you have that's, throttles all the way up, and then you back it that's down correct. and slow it. So. That's correct, you use that for butterfly. Yep. So um, we want the, the throttle to be uh, uh, the way it is right now here, so it's actually, the idle is reversed. So we're good with that. And actually, uh, we can see already now the throttle starts working. Uh, we press enter, we move to the next, uh, step here. One of the things we're going to see, Manny, is as we're setting this up, it's immediately going to guide us through the priorities, and one of them is throttle cut. Why don't you show us how to do that? Setting up a switch, and let's say we decide it's going to be switch S1, we press the enter key, and it will ask you just to touch the, the switch that you would like to use for your throttle cut. And in this case here, I just uh, uh, used uh, switch S1, okay. and uh, now you see the throttle does not work unless we turn it on. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So, this is really an, an important step because while you're working on your model, mm -hmm. uh, accidents can happen. So two things, prop off and always have a throttle cut. That's kind of yep. a little backup. And if you're flying in groups, teaching in groups, establish where you want that to be on your radio and make it consistent across the board. So we got our model bound, we got our model selected, and Correct. we have it named. Now we got to address this Elevon issue, don't we? Correct. We now have to tell the radio how to treat this particular yep. airplane and obviously the first place we're going to be looking at is our wing yep. services. If okay. you're working on a conventional airplane, you're not going to need this step. It's only going to be in if you have flying wings or something that has Elevon mixing. Correct. Okay. So we have to tell the radio that it's dealing here with a um, Delta. Um, the way we do that, we go to the tail type and we press enter again. And there are multiple options here. Um, VTEL, that's for sailplanes, yep. if you have that. And then we have Delta and basically if we select this one here, um, the airplane now created its mixes, and if you look now, you see up, both surfaces go up, and then we have our ailerons also programmed um, the way they should be. Yep, if you're wondering about that, we have a great video called the High Five Method to let you know what surfaces move what direction, but basically when you move your stick to the right, the right surface should go up to make a right turn. When you pull back, both surfaces should go up. So we got our Elevons mix. What we did is we brought back our little mini Sportster to show you some new features that are gonna cross over for both the Elevon mixes and the conventional aircraft, and that's things like the servo page. Right. Uh, first, we have to uh, select the model because we, we changed model right yep. now. Um, so we will be selecting the model we had before, the nameless model. That's the nameless model, the thing I told you one. not to do. Yeah. And I love how quick that thing links. You see? Uh, yeah, so the link is almost immediate, and, yep. and that is something that is uh, always working in your benefit, especially yep. when there is a disconnect in signal. Yes. Uh, at least the Gartner radios are known to bind extremely fast uh, in, yep. in, in case of a signal loss. Now let's go ahead and move the sticks real quick just to talk about a couple things. We have this set up here. One thing, you only see one aileron moving. That's not because yes. the servo's broken, it's because we have dual aileron set up. Okay. The other thing we have is our elevator's backwards, but our rudder's correct. And our aileron's correct, but half of it's not working. Good. Why don't you go ahead and show us how to fix these? So this is a single servo aileron, yeah? Yep. Okay. So we go uh, to the model type, and we select the model, and we look here. We select the two aileron model, and um, automatically your ailerons start working. Now, something to know about Gopner radios is how the channel assignments are, because by default they're always the same. Mm -hmm. Channel mm -hmm. one is always your throttle. Channel two is always aileron. your aileron, and you can decide whether it's gonna be the right or the left aileron. Channel three is always the elevator. Channel four is always the rudder. Channel five is your second aileron, and channel six is your flaps, okay, on a six channel radio. So um, no, no need for second guessing uh, anything here, but there's of course also a shorter way of looking at where the channels are and what they are doing. Um, shall we talk about the servo menu? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the servo menu. Okay. Now you've turned on our two ailerons, this is working properly now, so life is good. Yes. So the model basically functions the way we want. It doesn't yet mean that mechanically everything is perfect. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's very important that before you start even 
configuring your radio, you s try to set up your uh, airplane mechanically as clean as possible. Okay, so I always say spend 80% of the time on the mechanics, then you will spend only 10% of your time, 20% yeah. of your time on the radio versus exactly the opposite. Trust me, it's a lot quicker to make a new push rod and to accept the fact that maybe it's a little too long or a little too short than try to adjust it out and limit what your radio can do in the future. Exactly. So um, we have here the, uh, the uh, view button and this is a actually a shortcut to just see what the servos are really doing on your radio. So when we press this you see these bars here and um, the first bar is actually the your throttle. If we move this forward and you see the throttle is working and on this model we did not configure a throttle cut. Yeah. Okay, a throttle hold, throttle cut. Okay, so obviously it is working here. Um, when we move our aileron, you'll see actually because we told the radio that we have a two aileron uh, radio, uh, um, uh, airplane, um, you will see channel th uh, 2 and channel 5 moving simultaneously. Uh, the rudder is on um, uh, channel 4 and then we have here the elevator on channel uh, 3. So here you can already see if you're actually close to what it is you want and you'll just keep on going back and forth between this menu as you actually start setting up uh, your model. Super. Now keep in mind, dual aileron is only needed if you have both servos going into separate channels, channel 2 and channel 5. Correct. If you use a single aileron yeah. uh, a model, then Like a Y harness. Yes, like with a Y harness, then it's only channel 2 and channel 5 is then actually available for other things. Like a bomb drop, a gear, things like that. Or telemetry sensors. Or telemetry sensors. There <laughs> okay. you go. Good. So let's say that we have a situation where we did set up everything. Everything works, but it works the opposite. At the uh, several settings menu, this is basically uh, the, 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 the place where you will be doing everything that has to do with servo. So it's actually making fine adjustments, mm -hmm. it's reversing the servo, so if it goes in the opposite direction, or limiting the travel of the servo. So it's all in one place here. Makes it very convenient. Yes. So let's, let's go directly to the elevator servo yep. here. Okay, so we move our cursor to S3 because the elevator is on channel 3, and um, we press enter. And now you see here the, that field is selected and um, we still have our aileron um, uh, moving in the opposite direction and the only thing we have to do is just move the cursor and you see here the arrow is actually changing direction and it means actually it flipped the direction of the servo and here it now starts um, uh, moving in the, in the correct direction. Super. So simply by highlighting the arrow, hitting the cursor and changing the direction of it and then following up with enter. You don't want to just move on, correct? Yes, you have to always press enter to just uh, confirm the action you took. Uh, another thing is that we can do it right now here is let's say that mechanically you have optimized everything, but it's still a little bit yeah. uh, off, you know, a, a uh, one or two millimeters. It's a good idea not to go ahead and use your trims to trim out a slight difference, but use sub trim. Sub trim will actually give you that center and keep your trims able to, to give those fine adjustments when you're actually flying. Correct. So the next field is actually letting you do that. Again, you move with the cursor, you move to the next field, and you press enter. Mm -hmm. And here you enter, uh, uh, basically with the keys, how much trim you would like to add as a preset, and this is basically your sub trim. With that, you actually actually compensated for the mechanics that uh, were not uh, 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 ideal for that, for that well, uh, control. And right here you can see that just about a millimeter or two on the right wing here, it's up a little bit, so why don't you go ahead and adjust that out? I believe that would probably be uh, servo two, right? Um, depends how you wired it. Let's find let's out. See. So, Josh, does it need to go up or down? It needs to go down. Go down. Uh, that's going up. Oh, okay. Now we go the other direction. Perfect. Up oh, a little bit other way now. Perfect. So let's say ten percent. Ten percent. There you go. Okay. Now the far side here is on channel five, and we need to take that up just a little bit. Basically, if it goes the wrong way, hit the button the I other way. Hit the way, button right? the other way. And Perfect. So actually, they're both 10... 10 degrees? Yeah, so 10 percent here it shows <laughs> here. So um, at least you're consistent in there building. There you go. <laughs> I'm always equally off on both push rods that I always bend. Uh, we do include linkage stoppers on a lot of our speedboat kit electronics packs, but I really like having a nice solid link, not relying on that linkage stopper to pinch the push rod. It keeps it lighter and it keeps it simple, but try to get it as close as possible. Yeah. 
Um, then, of course, sometimes we have to limit the travel mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, mechanically, yeah. uh, the servos may get damaged yeah. uh, a, in case... Uh, a, a good example is be this F-22 here. You don't want this elevator to go all the way up and bottom out against this top fin. Correct. So yes. you're going to want to limit the travel before it hits us and binds your radio. All right. So we can we can do that as well, and, and let's take a, let's go back to the elevator again. When you try to limit, basically we call it the EPS, the endpoint adjustments. And when you're trying to limit the throw of a surface, um, you can either do it on uh, both, both mm -hmm. at the same time, or only one direction. Uh, sometimes mechanically, you know, you need a little bit more on one end than on the other end. If you want to do it on both, uh, all you do is really uh, you we we move the cursor to. Um, to the uh, to the uh, to the field here, and then we start actually uh, reducing the throw. We can actually um, let's move it to fifty percent. Yeah, and that's See? giving you half the throw. Half the throw, or uh, let's say we would like to only do it. Let me bring it back up, yep. and we would like to do that only. Uh, let's say on the upwards part of the. So we move our stick up, press enter, and then now we can reduce the uh, only one one side of the uh, of the control. So you're basically using the stick to define the quadrant you want to move, whether it's the Correct. up travel or the down yeah. travel. So if it's center, it will do both. If it's one direction or the other, it will do just that direction you would like to change. I love how it's all on one page because you can see it, and then always you can go to view and see exactly what it's doing, correct? Correct, because the view will always show you the effect here. So if you look here at the elevator, it was it's doing 63% yep. in one direction and 93% in the other direction. Beautiful. Okay, so you can actually see directly the results. And obviously, you'll have to test fly and see how that will eventually work for you. Fantastic. Typically, we wouldn't put flaps on a tiny little airplane like this, but say someone wants to build a Bushwhacker or an FT Explorer or a plane that could use flaperons, yeah. we already have our dual aileron set up, so why don't you go ahead and show us how to do flaperon there? Sure. Well, we have to go back to the model type okay. and actually revisit the, uh, the model type. So we go back to the main menu and press model type. And as you see right now, we have the model type set up as a two aileron, mm -hmm. and uh, the radio doesn't know anything about that it has or that, that it has also flaps. So we have to make some changes here. Uh, maybe uh, we also add at this moment also a throttle cut just uh, for the uh, <laughs> yep. for the safety. So now we have our throttle cut. Yep, works. And you'll and notice here it doesn't yep. work. Right. Yep. And we change the model now from a two aileron model to a two aileron model with one flap. So this is basically, um, uh, because it's a six, six channel radio, we cannot have two flaps, we can only mm -hmm. have one, one flap. So we changed the model and it's now uh, a, a two aileron uh, and a flap model here. It doesn't do anything yet, yeah. okay? Everything just works, so we have to actually assign a switch to yeah. the, uh, the flap. So that's our next screen over, huh? Yes. Now one thing here, I can't gush about this enough, Everything is methodically thought out to guide you from the top to the right. So if you notice here, every page we've gone has gone from model select to setting it up and just kind of walked us through the pace. You're going to see this common theme on like the MZ-18s, the MZ-24s, Correct. as you go through it. So if you're comfortable with this, it's only going to get easier in the future. Yep. So, so we, we, we want to actually assign a switch to mm -hmm. the flap so that the flap starts working at the moment we, we hit it. So. Um, Let's take channel five, which is the flap channel. It's also the L1 channel, but we, we mix it here together. Yeah, we don't want to lose our channel six, right. right? So we hit this one here, and we just clicked, or just moved the uh, the, the switch yeah. here, and it automatically already maps that switch to the flaps, but that's, I don't think it's right. That's, that's way too much reflex. Okay, so we don't want to have, <laughs> this is not flaps, this is actually, yeah, something completely different. Yeah, yeah. it's wrong is what it is. Yeah. So uh, flaps are only going from one, uh, one direction, mm -hmm. they go to the other direction, so yep. they don't have a dual direction. If you had a designated flap, ideally what you'd have is neutral throw would be the one full end point, and then full deflection Correct. would be the other full end point. Because we're doing flap parons, we got to go ahead and limit our travel, which we talked about earlier, but why don't you go ahead and show us again. Sure. So. We move to the uh, the uh, the endpoint attachment. Mm -hmm. or basically, that's the the, the throws that the yep. server. So one side we don't want really. So we have to actually um, kind of toggle it back and forth. Toggle it right. back and forth and say, well, we we don't want this side to move at all. And so we zero it out. And you see, it slowly starts moving. 
and now um, the flap uh, doesn't do really anything on, on, on this side here, but yeah. when we toggle it, it goes down to the, uh, uh, to the right side yep. here. And, and again, you can reverse the switch depending on how you want it. But also here, maybe this is a little bit too much for flaps. Mm -hmm. So let's tune that a little bit. And speaking of reversing the switch, all you would do is flip the switch, then select the switch again and flip it the other way. Is correct. that correct? Yes. So you don't have to go into your servo reverse. And what you do is reset the switch with the throw in the opposite direction and then flip it back the other way. So if you want your flaps to be deployed when you pull down, you would actually have it inverted. Correct? Inverted, correct. Yes. Beautiful. So now we have uh, flaps. The ailerons are still working. So you're coming in for landing. You can still control the airplane. And, um, and now the flaps are up. So Manny, we want to do dual rates and expo next. So why don't we go ahead and move the flaps to a rolling knob and then we can move on and go ahead and, uh, and use that switch for dual rates. So we're going to change the flap from switch three to, the, uh, to this control here. So again, we uh, press the enter key. We just touch the, uh, the control. And now we actually actively moved our flaps uh, to this knob here. And you see we can actually control it in a, in a more precise and finer way. And um, yeah, so you have multiple options how to operate your flaps. All right, so now we have everything sub-trimmed, we have everything working properly. We even have flaps on this thing. Yeah. But there's something I always mention at the end of build videos, it's recommended dual rates and expos. Correct. So that's basically the rate is the amount of throw, and the expo is a softness you feel in the center. We have great videos below that we'll link to give you guys more information about that. But why don't you go ahead and show us how to put 30% expo and maybe 50% rates. All right. Also here, we will assign the switch first. Uh, it's easy. We have now S3 uh, free. Uh, we press Again, enter, we just touch the switch, and now uh, dual rate for A1 is on switch three. Normally, we do a single switch for all surfaces, unless you're really, uh, I know pattern flyers, they like to have um, more switches for their dual rates, yeah. but for now, let's uh, stick to one switch. So we actually will be assigning the same switch to all uh, uh, our control surfaces. One important thing to keep in mind is make sure you throw the switch the same direction as you assign it or else what'll happen is when you throw it the other way, it'll actually turn one door right off as it turns the other door right on. The nice thing is you can see right there yes. in the indicator that right. everything's working together. So what we did now, we assigned a single switch for dual rate and expo for uh, all our services. And now we have to put in how much dual rate we really want. So the way I have it on my airplanes is usually the, um, the uh, lower uh, uh, position of the switch is my low rate mm -hmm. and the high position is my high rate so let's go and set up our low rates for um, our a one so what I basically just asked Manny is I said give me 75% so if what we're currently seeing now is 16 degrees and I want to say 12 degrees right. and I'm going to have them move it back 25% that's going to lower our rate and give us less of a throw so this is 75%. We can do it actually on all the control surfaces. So, mm -hmm. On our free plans and also our speedboat kits, we give you guys throw gauges. It's really important that you use those. Generally, when we give you our linkages where we say move it two holes from the center servo if you're using our servos, it's going to get you very, very close. But if you have a programmable radio, it can get you the ability to fine tune it even more and have a much better experience. Yeah. So all the control services on low rates are now 75%. So uh, how many expo do you tell your users? Uh, to let's do 30% expo. 30% expo. Yep. Same process as before. You're just selecting with enter. You're moving it up and then concluding with enter. Yeah. And so now when we move the stick slowly, um, it will actually, in the, in, in the beginning, it will move little and then it will slowly actually yep. um, uh, give you the full throw on it. If you guys want to know more about dual rays and expos, we have a wonderful video that we'll link down to below. All right, so Manny, one of the requirements and strong suggestions just for safe flying is that we have a fail-safe set up. What is fail-safe? Fail-safe basically allows you to uh, pre-configure the airplane in case there is a loss of contact between the model and the radio. Yep. So let's say you're flying full power and you're in a turn and suddenly there is a loss of uh, control. Um, what you would like to do is that uh, obviously the motor is being cut off, so that throttle is automatically being cut off, and that your airplane is going to be level. So, so basically, say you're a 3D pilot, some 3D pilots would actually want to put their plane, cut the throttle, put it in a flat spin. They right. don't want it to have any inertia going forward, or oftentimes just a simple rule of thumb is the throttle off, everything neutral. Correct. So that's what we're going to do here, isn't it? Let's do that. Okay, so we go to the fail-safe menu, that is 
um, on the last line of all the menus here, mm -hmm. so it's, it's called fail safe. And here we will be telling first of all which channels we would like to include in the fail safe. Okay, so because some, some channels are not really necessary to be included in a fail safe here. We will include channel number one. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we'll, let's include all the uh, control channels that, that is basically between channel one and four. Okay. Okay. Now, would that also include five since we have a uh, dual aileron? Um, or dual yes. aileron? Yeah. No, yes, you're right. Yeah. Super. Okay. Um, so we tell now that, we, we, we're telling it right now, the radio, that this is the channels that we would like to include, and we want to store the position of the controls uh, when we make the store, basically, when we save it. There's another here, a function is the delay. We don't want immediately that the airplane goes into fail safe mode because sometimes there's a, just a small disconnect, yeah. okay, and the radio, I mean, they're rebinding and everything is fine, and so this is a little bit less than a second. So we, we wait at least a second until we let the fail safe uh, kick in here. So what we did here is actually we set all the controls we want uh, uh, to be uh, when the fail safe kicks in, and we go to the store uh, um, uh, option here, and we click store. So what is happening right now is that the transmitter is telling the receiver, so there are settings inside the receiver that are safe now, to tell the receiver what to do in case there is no signal. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, and there's an easy way to test it, of course, without a, without a, the prop on for sure. Propeller. So let's say we have now the motor running and we turn our radio off. Beautiful. And yep. see what happened here was the motor was automatically disconnected. We can even go a step further here. So let's say we are flying and... Ready? Yep. You see? Airplane neutralizes itself and it will actually now uh, turn into a glide or whatever attitude it was, but it will the impact will be a little bit less without the yep. motor on and it's safer. You'll never want to have an aircraft or a multi-rotor for that matter that fail safes to power on. So that's the one rule of thumb. If you're worried about what to do, just go neutral, power off, you're good to go. Okay, All right, let's turn so it on again. Um, now, a, a good thing is that now when we turn the radio on yeah. and now we have our throttle, of course, not at the minimum, the radio will actually warn us that the throttle is too high and in order for this alarm to go away, we just bring it all the way down and we bind again and we got our airplane back. Beautiful. We have everything set up, we're gonna go out in the field and we wanna fly. Yes. One thing that's required and the people we strongly encourage is to do a range test. Correct. What is a range test? A range test is basically bringing, uh, checking if the radio and the receiver are communicating well with each other over a certain distance. On an optimal level. An optimal level. The way we do that is by reducing the transmission power from the radio to a level that we say, well, this is now in a, uh, the radio is now in a reduced transmission state, and when we walk away from our model, we want to see that the model still responds, uh, let's say after, uh, in this case here, I think we, we advise anywhere between 30 and 50 meters. Um, I'm so still a metric. <laughs> yeah, basically 30 to 50 paces yes. is a good way to say. That's about, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take a couple of paces. And yeah. um, so we have a standard function built in here that allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's on the RF set menu. And um, it's called range test. So it gives you about 99 seconds to walk away from your model uh, after you engaged it and uh, move the controls. It's always good to have a helper who yes. will always you know, tell you, okay, yeah, it works, doesn't work. Uh, of course, you have your all cut uh, yep. active, um, and uh, you start taking those 50 paces away after you um, engage the, uh, the yep. range test. And um, yeah, usually after 25, 50 paces, you know, if you see everything is working, it means that uh, everything is optimally. Uh, right. So optimally. what you're doing is you're simulating distance, because you don't want to have to walk a half a mile away to see if this thing starts glitching. You want to be able to see it within a few paces. Number one, see your model, but also you don't want to waste time, you want to fly. Uh, after 99 seconds, yep. you're back, good to yep. go. And so pressing enter will just stop doing uh, the range test and your transmitter is back to optimal uh, power and you can just go and fly safely now. Beautiful. Friends, I wanna thank you for watching and Manny, thank you so much for coming down and helping us uh, find out all the features and functions of the MZ-12. It was a pleasure, I really enjoyed it. And um, 
And again, we talked about it. Uh, if you need support, you can find us uh, either on Flight Test. Yeah, we have uh, on the forum groups of Flight Test, look for Grapner USA. That's me usually uh, answering questions and RC groups. Uh, yeah. We are very active there as well. And you can always call. Absolutely. Friends, we want to thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know. We'll see you next time.